Hey everyone, welcome to module number four. In this module, we're going to be talking about the intersection between gender and sports. Now, there's an um, interesting distinction that I'd like to make here as we get started thinking about gender and sport, and that's the difference specifically between gender and sex. Gender refers to the socially constructed ideology that outlines the differences between women and men. Now, sex, on the other hand, refers to the biological and physical differences between males and females. So what we are talking about in this module is gender, specifically the way that we socially construct ideas of what it means to be masculine and what it means to be feminine, and the way that gender draws attention to the socially unequal di distinction between femininity and masculinity, specifically in sport. So research has clearly demonstrated that sports are gendered activities, as well as social contexts in which boys and men are more actively and enthusiastically encouraged to participate than are girls and women. Now we see this in a host of different contexts. We see this in families where fathers have been shown to encourage sports participation for their sons more often than they do for their daughters. We see um, sports as gendered activities when we look at sports media and the representation of girls and women versus boys and men in sports and in the media and of and the representation of athletes. Um, we also see this in coaching um, in both in terms of the numbers of male versus female coaches that we see and also the um, sort of ideology that is encouraged in coaching a male dom an ideology that's focused on male dominant characteristics like um, aggression and competitiveness. So in one sense, um, you know, sp the sports world is really organized in the same way that much of society is. We can argue that sports are male dominated because the characteristics of men are used as sort of the standard for judging. Um, if you say somebody throws like a girl, that's typically a negative connotation, and it means they're not playing right. They are playing, and they're playing right if they're playing like a male. We think that the organization of sports, um, we see evidence that it is male-centered. So men are the expected focus of attention in sports programs and in media coverage, for example, um, which is why we refer to the Final Four and then the Women's Final Four, and. The organization of sports is also male identified, so the orientations and the actions of men are used as standards of defining what is normal in sports. And we can see evidence of something like this when we um, refer to the boys team as the bulldogs and the girls team as the lady bulldogs. So the boy is the standard and the girl is the exception to the standard. Now this type of ideology is so deeply rooted in the social world, specifically in sport, that we rarely even think about it or question it. And that's what I'd like to do in this module. I'd like to take a look at the factors um, from a social, sociological standpoint that impact race and gender in sport, and then also the way that race, uh, I mean that gender in sport impacts um, the actual industry itself. Now since the 1970s, Opportunities for girls and women in sport have improved and participation rates um, among girls and women have also increased. The impacts of Title IX specifically have been far reaching and today we have more girls and women playing sport than ever before in history. So we're gonna consider this and the sociological implications of participation in professional opportunities throughout this module. 